So in today's video, I want to show how to uh, reduce a time-dependent Schrodinger's equation form into its time-independent form by using the separation of variables method. So uh, in quantum mechanics, one of the most fundamental equations is the Schrodinger's equation. Uh, now what happens is that if you want to study some kind of a quantum mechanical system, you want to study the evolution of a um, quantum mechanical particle, you want to study the trajectory of a particle, the most, the first thing that you need to do is solve the Schrodinger's equation and from the solution you can study, you can get an idea about uh, many different physical quantities like position, momentum, velocity, acceleration and all these different things associated with that particular system. For example, in classical mechanics what you basically do if you want to study the trajectory of a particle is that you basically have the Newton's second law. You, If you know all the forces and you know the position and the velocity of a particle at a given instant in time, they, then you solve the Newton's second law. From that you can find out the position uh, with respect to time. A time derivative of the position gives you an idea about the velocity. The time derivative of the velocity gives you an idea about the acceleration. So in the same way, in quantum mechanics, uh, if you want to study a particular system or uh, a particle which is bound by some kind of a force field or a potential, then you basically solve the Schrodinger's equation and from in that solution, uh, different kinds of information is, is uh, contained in it and how you proceed from there on is a completely different matter. But in this video, I what I want to show is how to reduce the time uh, dependent Schrodinger's equation to its uh, time independent form. So the most basic uh, time uh, dependent Schrodinger's equation is uh, of this form. So as you can see in the uh, time dependent Schrodinger's equation, the wave function so solution psi here is actually a function of both space and time domain and the potential itself is also a function of x and t. Now this, this as you can see that this is a partial differential equation which contains two partial derivatives. So one is a second order partial derivative of x and the other is a first order partial derivative of time and uh, I can reduce this uh, partial differential equation into an ordinary differential equation if, if certain conditions are met. So what conditions I'm talking about? So for example, if this particular wave function uh, which is both a function of x and t can be written as a product of uh, two separate functions. One is a function of space and the other is a function of time. In that case, I can reduce this expression to an ordinary differential equation. Now what happens is that this kind of condition is true only in those cases whenever the particle is uh, experiencing some kind of a potential field where the potential field is independent of time. So basically I have a potential field which is independent of time and it is only dependent on x here. So for example, gravitational field, uh, electrostatic field. So if the particle is experiencing fields like that, which is independent of time, in those cases, the wave function solution is usually can be written as a product of two separate functions, both being uh, uh, functions of independent separate variables. Now, if this, this condition is being met, so let's say this is condition number one and this is condition number two. So if I use so obviously these are both related to each other so this is known as separation of variables method so separation of variables okay so if if i have this particular condition i can use this condition to reduce this expression into a much simpler form which can be solved for different kinds of uh, uh, quantum mechanical problems so now let's replace equation number one in this particular Schrodinger's equation. So if I do that, my equation becomes minus h cross square by 2m del square by del x square this this simple psi x plus phi t plus v x is equal to i h cross del by del t of Now, uh, in the first term here, uh, this is a second order different uh, de uh, partial derivative of 
uh, this particular product but this product contains two separate functions one is a function of space the other is a function of time domain since uh, x and t both are independent variables so i can take this term outside the derivative expression so this becomes minus h cross square by 2m phi t del square psi x pi del x square plus v x psi x phi t is equal to i h cross. Similarly, in this uh, term, uh, I can uh, take the uh, function of x variable outside the partial derivative of time in this case. So, i h cross phi x del phi x by del t. Now, one thing to notice is that the moment I take these terms outside the derivative expression, this suddenly becomes an ordinary derivative, right? This becomes an ordinary derivative, it does not remain a partial derivative anymore because the function here is a function of only one variable. So it becomes an ordinary derivative. Now to simplify it, I what I do is, so this is phi t, I take this out, minus h cross square by 2m. Okay, now taking these two expressions on the other side, interchanging them, I get, so, uh, so I get 1 by phi x minus h cross square by 2m. Now, as you can see, this differential equation has been reduced to an ordinary differential equation in which on the left hand side, uh, all these terms, all both of these two terms are basically functions of x. There is no dependence on the variable of time t. And on the right hand side, this term here is a uh, uh, is dependent is a function of time there is no dependence of x now x and t these are both independent variables and on the left hand side if you have some kind of a function of x and on the right hand side if you have some kind of a function of t and both these two expressions are equal to each other uh, since there is no dependence of, uh, uh, since both x and t are independent of each other, then the only conclusion that you can derive from this kind of an equation is that uh, they are both equal to some kind of a constant. And let's denote this kind of a constant value to be, let's say, something like g. Okay, g is a separation constant. So we call g as the separation constant g okay now if i if i if i do this then i can i can separate both these two equations in uh, uh, separate this entire equation into two different equations so i can write that minus h cross square by 2m d square psi by dx square plus v psi is equal to g psi let's see this is point number three and we also have i h cross d phi by dt is equal to g phi t okay so now let's look at the fourth equation let's look at the fourth equation <clears throat> In the fourth equation, you have i h cross d phi by dt is equal to g phi or d phi by dt is equal to 1 by i h cross g phi which can be written as if you take the imaginary number i upwards, this is going to become minus i by h cross g phi or this is written as d phi by dt is equal to i by h cross ig by h cross phi t yeah, right so i is the imaginary number h cross is a Planck's constant divided by 2 pi g is the separation constant which is equal to both these two different expressions okay now to solve this equation is very simple so if you if you if you have some equation of the form, let's say dy by dt is equal to, let's say some kind of a constant alpha multiplied by y, okay, because this entire equation is of this form, then the solution of this kind of an equation is written as y is equal to, uh, y is equal to e to the power uh, uh, alpha t, okay, this is the solution of an equation like that. 
Why you can check that if I find the first order derivative of dy with respect to time, then dy by dt is equal to so d by dt of e to the power alpha t, which is basically the alpha is a constant, comes outside alpha e to the power alpha t. So e to the power alpha t is equal to y. So this can be written as alpha y, alpha y. So dy by dt is equal to alpha y is the different first order differential equation whose solution is y is equal to e alpha t okay so now i will use this conclusion here that if we have this constant i g by h cross is equal to some kind of a constant alpha okay i g by h cross is some kind of a constant alpha in that case the solution phi t i'm sorry the minus is here there's a minus sign so minus this thing okay so phi t is equal to phi t is equal to e to the power alpha t which is equal to e to the power minus i g by h cross t. So this is the solution of equation number 4. Okay, this is the solution of equation number 4. So equation number 4 has a solution of phi t is equal to e to the power minus i g by h cross t. Okay, this is the solution. Now, let's look at this particular solution. The solution is basically uh, exponential to the power something multiplied by time. Now, what and this, um, this constant also includes an imaginary number. Now, if you have, uh, you have expressions of the form e to the power i theta, then they are basically written as cos theta plus i sine theta, right? And if you have expressions of the e to the power minus i theta, this can be written as cos theta minus i theta. So if I, if I, if I, if I also uh, uh, decompose this particular expression in the terms of cosines and sines, then uh, basically I can write as e to the power minus i g by h cross t is equal to uh, cos cos uh, g by h cross t minus i sine g to the power h cross t. Okay where h cross is nothing but h by 2 pi so this is basically cos g by 2 pi g by h t minus i sine 2 pi g by h t okay now as you can see here this is some kind of an oscillatory function. Right? This is a, some kind of an oscillatory and the oscillatory dependence has a frequency of is equal to cos 2 pi mu t minus i sine 2 pi mu t, right? Where the frequency mu is is equal to g by h. Okay, because these are not just mathematical functions, they are supposed to uh, represent some kind of a particle which is uh, uh, experience, experiencing some kind of a potential field. Uh, um, now, if, if we have a time dependence which is oscillatory in nature, then that oscillation of the, that time dependent function has an expression which is equal to g by h. But we already know as given by, um, as given by, uh, Einstein and Planck's equation is that the frequency of any kind of a wave associated with some kind of a particle has a relationship with Planck's constant and energy which is whose expression is given by E is equal to h nu. So this comes from uh, Planck Einstein's postulate. So this expression was most initially given by Max Planck when he was trying to explain the phenomena of black body radiation and later on it was also borrowed by Einstein to explain the photoelectric effect. So we already know that whenever we have some kind of a particle which has a wave associated with it then the frequency of the wave is related to its energy by this kind of an expression. So, so by looking at this similarity of this expression we can conclude that this or g is equal to h nu in this case g is nothing but the energy of that particle uh, stuck in that kind of a given quantum mechanical system so g is actually equal to the energy by comparing the max uh, planck einstein uh, postulate of relating frequency with that of the energy and the conclusion that we came up about from here so g is nothing but the energy of 
the particle stuck in that kind of a quantum mechanical system. So if G is equal to E, in that case, so if G is equal to E, then equation number four, equation number four gives us the solution phi t is equal to e to the power minus i e by h cross t. So this is the uh, function which shows you the dependence on time and equation number 3 takes the form of minus h cross square by 2m d square psi by dx square plus v psi is equal to e psi. So this here, this equation here is the time independent Schrodinger's equation. This is the time independent Schrodinger's equation which can be further used uh, in whatever problem we are studying to, uh, uh, to, to know about the solution. So these, this psi here is known as the eigenfunction and psi is nothing but a function of x. Now, uh, for all kinds of cases of quantum mechanical systems where we can use separation of variable methods if the potential field is independent of time, in all of those cases, the time dependence can be written in this form and then we have the space dependence given by the time independence for Schrodinger's equation. So the next step is to obviously solve this equation depending upon what kind of problem we have at hand. So the final solution, so the final wave function solution therefore can be represented as wave function solution can be represented as a product of this eigenfunction psi and t here. So this can be written as so the solution of the Schrodinger's equation has a wave function which can be written in this form and this is the eigenfunction which is a solution of the time independent Schrodinger's equation. Now this is also known as eigenfunction or sometimes also known as stationary states because this is independent of the time domain and if you solve this uh, time independent Schrodinger's equation for some particular uh, quantum mechanical problems then you will find that the probability density of the particle uh, for uh, 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 those kind of cases are always constant with respect to time. So the, the, the there is the, the so if, if, if this is the case then the probability density of the particle which has a wave function solution that looks like this is independent of independent of time. How, how can you prove that? So for example if you have if you want to find the probability uh, probability uh, probability distribution of a particle you basically do psi star psi dx right so if you do this so this this exponential terms gets cancelled out and you're left with this particular term only which is independent of time so probability distribution is independent of time and therefore uh, this is also you, you end up getting stationary states so this is how you can reduce uh, a time a dependent Schrodinger's equation to a time independent form by using the separation of variables method thank you